Hey guys, welcome to part two of our German Wehrmacht train build. Today is an exciting day because part two or episode two is always really what makes or break a series, I believe. So um, we're able to put together episode two here of our series and I'm starting it with a box of four separate trucks here that uh, all have loads, but I'm going to do them one at a time. So each episode or sorry, each truck is going to be a separate episode. So I'm gonna open this box up and pull out one at a time and each one of those will be its own separate episode that I will upload. I'm gonna to try to upload them each week or uh, each weekend. So I'm gonna start opening this box here. I've got my handy dandy green knife here because I lost my Kershaw after the last video, uh, but we'll, let's hope that this does just as well. It did just as well. Okay, we're opening it up now. I'm really hoping, I see all the peanuts here. I'm really hoping that these all come in separate boxes because with my situation right now, I have to move a lot. Ooh, and it looks like they do. I have to move a lot, so that means that I need good storage for these things so that they don't uh, break while I'm doing it or while I'm moving around. So it's important for me to point out to you guys who makes these models. Uh, a guy named John from JTG 1942 or uh, HO World War II Custom Details as Weathered Models. Uh, here's his name. Um, and here's his website right here. I'll put that uh, down below in the description. But he has a whole collection of models that he custom paints. Uh, they're mostly Roco mini tanks models, which are very good, very detailed HO models. But he custom paints them and custom weathers them and puts them together. And he sells a lot of them on eBay and they're, they're pretty good prices. And uh, I was able to get this set and I asked him questions about it and he got back to me within 15 minutes every single time. Um, just so far has been a very, very, very good guy to work with. I ordered these three days ago and I have them already. Um, so from there, what I can judge is he's been very good so far. Now we're going to be able to judge the actual model itself. I have no idea which one is in this box, but we're going to find out right now. All right, it's been placed, uh, there's peanuts in the box, and then it has bubble wrap with tape around it. And here is our first ever truck from or for our new train. Very, very, very cool. So there are even little figures on it uh, that came with it, and they are in snow uniform. They're in the German snow uniforms. So, so far it's a winter train, which is okay, because uh, it doesn't exactly have to be one season with this train. I'm not too entirely worried about when exactly this is all taking place. Um, but regardless, uh, we're going to probably go with the, with the gray vehicles uh, as we move on and get more and more stuff here. But I'm going to get you in on a closer look here and we'll take a, a better look at the details. Now one of the first things that I notice is it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. For example, I'll pull a, uh, a 50 foot box car up behind it, an American 50 foot box car pull that up behind it. Oh, I gotta bring it one track closer here. Just for a comparison here. Now that's a 50 foot box car. It's a lot bigger 
and it, it pretty much towers over it, which this is a smaller American uh, rolling stock piece now. So I think it's pretty funny how small it is, but it's neat. Uh, also, this boxcar rolls really nicely. I want you to see how that rolls, and now we'll find out how this car rolls with it. Oh yeah, rolls also very, very nice, very smooth. You also notice how there are only two axles on this. I think most of the cars that I purchase will only have two axles. I'm gonna get, I forgot to grab a light. I'm gonna grab a better light here so that I can shed a little bit more light on the subject. There, a world of a difference. I'm sorry I didn't have that up before. It, it totally skipped my mind. But we have the light and now you can really, really, really see the details on here. You can even see a little bit of weathering that I did on the trucks and the lower part of the actual car itself. Check out each one of these little, um, I don't even know what you would call them. Uh, they're not rivets, but the uh, little uh, stands here that hold the car together. It's skipping my mind right now. Um, and then back here, I don't know what this is. It looks like a tiny outhouse. I don't know if it's some sort of guard house, but I've seen them on a lot of uh, these German cars that I've been looking at. Um, if anybody in the comments could tell me what that is, that would be great. It looks like it's got a door and then a little window in the back. I'll show you, I'll show you the uh, front and back a little bit later. But if anyone can tell me what that is, that would be awesome because I don't know, but I think it looks cool. So, um, right here we have three barrels. They could have fuel in them. Uh, that's what I'm probably gonna say that they have in them. And then two crates here, and both the crates have German soldiers on them. Now it's pretty cool. This German soldier has an MG42, which is a machine gun if you're not familiar with German weaponry. He's got an MG42 in his lap, and this guy has a Car 98, which is a, a German bolt action rifle from World War II. That is very cool. These guys are very well detailed for how small they are, and they even have, you can see the equipment on their chest. I'm gonna try and get you a closer view of that later also. Now, under this, we're gonna have to use our imagination what's under the tarp here, but it definitely looks like it's blowing in the wind and that it, it has shape under it. And uh, that there's something under there that we don't know what it is, but we'll have to use our imagination. If you guys wanna be, um, creative with me you can put in the comments section something that's in there and we'll make it that um yeah that's about all for the side i'll turn it around for you but i don't think the other side's going to be a whole lot different yeah like i said the other side's not much different this is just the back side of the little outhouse there um the other side of the guys and it's all just pretty much the same one thing I will point out is that I believe it's real wood. I'll get you an overhead view, but I believe it's real wood um, under here, under the actual uh, cargo. All right, we're gonna turn this back around and I'm gonna get you a look from the front and maybe we'll get a better look at the, at the German soldier up there. All right, I'm holding the camera, so if it gets a little shaky again, I apologize. But here's the view from the front. There are those European couplers right there, and then it has the normal buffers there. Here is our German soldier sitting on top of the crate, and it looks like the crate has a padlock on it. German soldier, like I said, has a car 98 in his hands, and he's just chilling there, just hanging out. It looks like he's got his hands out, trying to warm him up on a fire, but there's no fire there, so hopefully he's close to the tender and he can steal a piece of coal or something. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the front. Neat little details and uh, the guy looks really, really good. Let's go to the back. Here's the back, again, normal buffers. There is the hand railing and it looks like it's got a handbrake right here. That little handbrake right there. That's a neat little feature that they put in there. And then you can see the outhouse there has a window, which is very cool. I'm also gonna give you a closer look at the German soldier in the back here. Now the German soldier in the back here, like I said before, he's got his MG42, he's just kind of chilling there. Uh, from here you can see how closely painted it is, but what this doesn't show you is how truly small this guy is. So 
if you think the paint scheme or his painting looks sloppy, that's because you're seeing it in very, very close detail. I'll put the tip of the pencil next to him. That's how small he is. This is the tip of the pencil. It's about the size of his head. And he's painted this well. That is very, very, very good detail. And from far away, he looks perfectly painted. He looks perfect. And right there, he's got a little snow on his boots there. And he's just chilling out on top of his crate next to the gas. Here is the top shot of this car, as I promised. And pretty much see all the same stuff. You can see the detail on the running board there on the right side. All the squares there, like grates. And then you can see how the actual bed of the car itself looks like real wood. And I believe it actually is. So a very, very, very cool feature there added in by JTG. That's about it for the top of it. You can see the, the guys chilling there again. Um, but I really just brought you up here so I could show you the, the wood, the wood uh, bottom of the, of the car. That's pretty much it for part two, guys. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of a running video. The power should not go out this time, so I'm going to get you the running video that I promised you. Uh, stay tuned for next week for another unboxing that I'm going to do. And I hope you come by. Hopefully you uh, will subscribe and, and be able to get this content right away if you're willing to tag along and stick along for this ride of building this German war train. Um, it's So far, I am very, very happy and I'm very excited and I'm having a blast and I hope you are doing the same. Alright guys, we'll see you next week.